Hello everyone, Dr. Mad here. Let's get mad about English language. So this video will talk about the exam structure and format, the assessment objectives, the marking criteria. We're not going to include the spoken language element in this, just the reading and writing papers. So as you can see, this is about the AQA exam. If you're doing another board, this video will still be useful. 90% of it will still be the same because the overall objectives, marking criteria and so on are the same for all boards. Just the exam format may be a little bit different, but even there, it's not that different. Okay. So there are two papers, as you can see, paper one, paper two, and they're both worth 50% each. And in each paper, you have two sections, section A and section B. There's a reading section and you have to answer questions. And then there's a writing section, which obviously is about writing. So paper one, section A, you get one unseen literature fiction text and you have to answer four questions on it. And section B is descriptive writing or narrative writing or you can call it creative writing. And in paper two, you get two sources, two extracts, both nonfiction. And you have to answer four questions. And you can imagine that with two extracts, there's something that you can do that you can't do with one extract, which is you can compare the two. Okay. So there is a comparison element in section A of paper two. And then section B is the writing section. But this time it's writing to present a viewpoint or viewpoint writing. And the total exam time is one hour 45 minutes for both. Okay, so that's a quick overview. Let's move on to the next slide. So the assessment objectives for section A, the reading comprehension and analysis section. So A01, identify and interpret explicit and implicit information and ideas, select and synthesize evidence from different texts. Now, to a certain extent, both of these apply to both papers, but really this one is more towards paper one and the difference between explicit and implicit. So explicit means obvious, is right there in front of you. Implicit means hidden meanings, it's not so obvious, okay? And then this one is more for paper two because synthesize means to combine. So obviously that's applying to paper two where there's two extracts. And then AO2, explain, comment, and analyze how writers use language and structure to achieve effects and influence readers using relevant subject terminology to support their views. So this applies to both papers. So remember, language means essentially words and phrases, picking those out and talking about the effects and connotations of those words and phrases. Structure means beginning, middle and end. How does a writer begin? How do they develop to the middle and then to the end? And then this is important. So using terminology when relevant. In other words, if you just throw in fancy terminology for the sake of it, you're not going to get many marks. But if you have two students, one student gives, makes a really good point and uses the right terminology, will obviously get more marks than somebody who just makes a good point but doesn't use the right terminology. Having said that, somebody who makes a good point but doesn't use any terminology compared to somebody who just throws in a lot of fancy terminology but their point isn't very good, well, then actually the first person, the one who makes the good point, regardless of the terminology, would get more marks, okay? And AO3, compare writers' ideas and perspectives as well as how these are conveyed across two or more texts. So obviously that would apply more to paper two. And then AO4, evaluate texts critically and support this with appropriate textual references. And this is more towards paper one. 
this picture I've just got from the internet and it's not quite correct actually because it says that comprehension means I understand what I read. Actually, so there are levels of reading and understanding. The most basic level is what we call decoding, which is where students can read aloud the words and you might think that they actually understand them, but when you test them, they don't understand them, okay? So the next level above decoding is what we call reading, okay? Which is where you can read and also understand what you're reading. But then comprehension is the next level up from that, where it's a, it means a deeper form of understanding, perhaps including hidden meanings, implicit information. And then above that are things like evaluate and compare. So there are all these different skills at different levels that you're being tested on. And obviously the higher level skills we'll get the higher marks. And then just going back to this word effects here, essentially what that means is thoughts, feelings, images. Okay, when you read, what thoughts, feelings, images come to your mind as you're reading, as you're picking out these words and phrases. Okay, so moving on to the next slide now. So this is the AOs for the creative and viewpoint writing, so for section B. So remember, this was for section A, and this is for section B. So AO5, communicate clearly, effectively, and imaginatively, selecting and adapting tone, style, and register for different forms, purposes, and audiences. Organize information and ideas using structural and grammatical features to support coherence and cohesion of texts. And AO6, candidates must use a range of vocabulary and sentence structures for clarity, purpose, and effect with accurate spelling and punctuation. So the first thing to notice is that it's the same AOs regardless of whether it's creative or viewpoint writing. Okay. But if you look through this, bits of it apply more to one or the other. So communicate clearly, that applies to both, and of course effectively. The imaginatively perhaps applies more to the creative, but even in viewpoint writing, you will have to use your imagination, okay? And now, these three things we'll skip for now, but in terms of forms, how that applies to the viewpoint writing is that you can get any, you might get any kind of writing. You might have to write a letter, a speech, or an article. Your purpose might be to inform or persuade. So persuade means to convince someone to change their mind about something or to do something, whereas inform is more neutral. You're just giving them the information and allowing them to make up their own minds. An audience, for example, might be children or adults. And obviously how you would speak or write to, a, to children would be different to how you would speak to or write to adults. And then this bit here, is perhaps more to, again to do with the viewpoint writing, making sure that your writing flows nicely and logically from beginning, middle to end. Coherence and cohesion are similar words, but not quite the same. So coherence is to do with meaning. In other words, that your what you're writing makes sense and flows nicely from beginning to middle to end. And cohesion is more to do with how you actually do that with your words, with your linking words, how you link one paragraph to the next, that kind of thing. And then obviously AO6 is basically spelling, punctuation and grammar, using a range of vocabulary, ambitious vocabulary for the higher grades. But again, just throwing in fancy words for, for the sake of it won't help you much. It needs to all fit in and make sense with the rest of what you're writing. And sentence structures meaning using a range of sentence lengths, a short, medium and longish, but not too long sentences, okay? Your sentences must not ramble on and on. Notice that clarity is in both, okay? Clarity means similar is like clearly. Purpose, notice here, purpose again, and effect. So this time, you are affecting the reader, affecting the reader with your writing, okay? And then with spelling, don't worry, if your spelling is poor, don't give up, I mean, Obviously, it's important to do the best you can, but uh, it's not the end of the world if you get some spellings wrong. Just do the best you can. And again, with punctuation, 
Yes, use a range of punctuation, but again, don't throw in punctuation marks for the sake of it, especially semicolons. A lot of students are told that they get high marks for semicolons. That's true, but only if you do them, if only if you use them correctly. Okay. If you're not sure how to use a punctuation mark, then it's best not to use it rather than to use it incorrectly. Okay, so those were the full assessment objectives. We can simplify all those. So section A, reading, comprehension and analysis. So A1 is to identify and interpret information, select and synthesize. So remember, this is more for paper two. This is more for paper one. A02 is language and structure, effects and connotations, relevant subject terminology where appropriate. So effects means the thoughts, feelings and images that come to your mind when you read something. And connotations are the alternative meanings of a word. And then we have the compare and the evaluate. These will become clearer when we look at some example papers. And then for the creative and viewpoint writing, communicate clearly, effectively and imaginatively. So that's more for paper one, the creative writing. And then for paper two, organize coherently and cohesively. But of course, with paper two, you still have to be clear and effective. And to a certain extent, you do have to use your imagination there as well. And AO6, spelling, punctuation and grammar, sentence structures and vocabulary. So this is simplified. If you can learn this by heart, strangely enough, that will help you in your exam. You can quickly write it down and tick those things off as you're working away. Okay, so marking criteria for section A. There are four levels. So level four, perceptive and detailed, will get you the highest grades depending on how much detail you go into it and how perceptive you are. Perceptive means deep, insightful, wise, okay? Clear and relevant will get you a good solid grade, five or six. And I'll come back to level two in a minute. For the level one, simple and limited, you'd only get a grade one or two. And for level two, you can get a grade four at the top, but really you kind of want to be aiming for the level three, the clear and the relevant. Now with this sum attempts, that doesn't quite make sense in the way that these others do. And the reason is these words will depend on the question. So it might be perceptive analysis, detailed comments, yeah, clear analysis, relevant comments. So here, if it was an analysis question, this would be some analysis, attempts to, to comment, okay? But these are the key words that teachers and examiners use to mark your work. Okay, and for the writing, there's actually eight levels. I mean, well, there's four levels and it's broken down into upper and lower. And for the writing, the content is worth 60%. And the grammar is worth 40%, which will be on the next slide. So for the highest grades, your writing needs to be compelling, compelling communication. If it's convincing, you'll get grade seven. If it's consistently clear, grade six, obviously these are very rough grades. And then generally clear level grade five or some sustained success, grade four. But notice the sustained which means that you have, have to be able to write at some length. So in other words, usually with the writing, teachers will tell you that it's all about the quality, not the quantity. Having said that, of course, there has to be some quantity. You can't write one brilliant sentence or one amazing paragraph and get a, get a grade nine. You have to prove that you can sustain, that you can continue with that amazing writing in order to progress these uh, up these higher grades, okay? And then for, if it's some success, but it's not sustained, it's a grade three, and then simple and limited. So you need to get to at least this grade, this level here, some sustained success at communication. Now you might think, what does sustained mean? So it's a bit tricky because sometimes teachers avoid telling you how much to write, but from a student's point of view, you do need to have some idea of how much to write. So the general rule is you're aiming for about two to three pages, okay? 
But obviously, depending on the size of your writing, all that kind of thing, that might vary. If you've got very small writing, maybe even two pages might be more than enough. But so you're aiming for about two pages minimum, one and a half, two pages, maximum three pages. Okay. So the, the bad news is you do have to write at least one and a half, two pages. Good news is you don't have to write more than three pages and you really shouldn't. Okay. So as a minimum, one and a half to two pages, maximum three pages, and between those bands, then the rest will be on quality, not on quantity. Okay. And then for grammar, level four, grade seven, eight, nine, you need very good to almost perfect spelling, punctuation, and grammar. Very good to almost perfect sentence structure. Extensive and ambitious use of vocabulary. For level three, grade five, six, you need good to very good spelling, punctuation, and grammar. Good to very good sentence structure. Increasingly sophisticated use of vocabulary. And level two, grade three and four, four, fair to good spelling, punctuation, and grammar. Fair to good sentence structure. Varied use of vocabulary. So notice to get to grade four, you need to be at least at the top of level two. And then level one, poor to weak spelling, punctuation and grammar, poor to weak sentence structure, simple use of vocabulary. You are not going to get very far with those. So just to repeat, for the writing, the grammar is really, really important. Okay, it's 40% and your content is 60%. Okay, so let's talk about the structure. So paper one, you get one extract, fiction, 80 marks, one hour, 45 minutes. You need to spend 10 minutes reading through the extract and the questions, okay? And then you've got question one, where you pick out four facts. You get four marks for that, and you've got five minutes. But actually, if you're a bit sharp, you can quite often do this in two or three minutes and save yourself a couple of minutes which may not sound like much, but for the language paper, timing is critical, and I'm gonna come back to that later. Question two is what we call the language question, basically picking out words and phrases, talking about their effects and connotations, and for that you get eight marks, and you've got 10 minutes. Question three is the structure question, beginning, middle, and end. How does the writer begin? How do they develop? How do they end? For that, that's also eight marks, and again, 10 minutes. Question four is the mini essay question, which I, I, that's what I call it. And that can be both about language and structure, but you can focus mainly on the language. And as you work your way through the extract, you'll be covering all structure automatically. I talk more about these things when I look at the, some example papers in the other videos. And for that, you've got 20 marks, 25 minutes. So notice this 20 marks, is worth all of these three questions put together. So you must not spend too long on these short questions, okay? You must move on. That is the biggest tip I can give you for the language paper. And then creative writing, 40 marks, 45 minutes, and notice that 40 marks is equal to all of these four questions put together. And then paper two, two extracts, non-fiction, 80 marks, one hour, 45 minutes. Again, spend 10 minutes reading through the extracts and the questions. Then, question one is four true statements. So they give you eight statements. You need to pick out four. That's four marks, five minutes. So again, you can save a couple of minutes here. Question two is the short compare. Eight marks, 10 minutes. Question three is a language question, which is similar to the this language question here, but it's worth 12 marks. So 15 minutes. So the formula is one and a quarter minutes per mark. And then question four is the long compare, 16 marks, 20 minutes. Now notice here, the number of marks goes up more evenly, four, eight, 12, 16. Whereas here is four, eight, eight, 20. But regardless of that, you still, so you still need to get to these higher level marks, high level mark questions, okay? You must not spend too long on these short, small mark questions. And then question five, viewpoint writing, 40 marks, 45 minutes.
Okay. Now, let's talk about how, in which order you might do the questions, which may sound a bit funny, but it is worth talking about. So here's a reminder of the paper structures, okay? Paper one, you've got four facts, language question, structure question, mini essay, creative writing. And those marks are four, eight, eight, 20, and 40. So you can see you need to get the, to these two questions. And then paper two, you've got four true statements, short compare, language question, long compare, viewpoint writing. But here, notice the marks go up more evenly, 4, 8, 12, 16, 40. But again, these are still the big mark questions, so you need to get to those. So, how might you do these questions? Well, the obvious way is to just work your way through, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In other words, front to back. But you must get to those questions 4 and 5, all right? Some teachers say, some people say, work backwards. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, because you're doing the big mark questions first. The only problem with that is that the creative and viewpoint writing can take a bit of time for, for you to think about, all right? So if you try to do those first straight away, you might be sitting there for quite a long time trying to work out what to write. Whereas if you do it from in this order, then by the time you've got there, hopefully you've already got some ideas. And this is why... At the beginning, I gave you the advice to read through everything first. Some people say, some teachers say, oh, jump straight to the questions. You know, do question one straight away. Don't bother reading everything. I think you need to read through everything for this reason, okay? That while you're doing question one, two, three, and four, you can also be thinking at the back of your mind about question five. To understand this in a bit more detail, you see, there are two parts to your mind, the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. And the conscious mind is actually very, very small. The unconscious mind is huge. So if you read through everything first, what happens? It will go through into your unconscious mind and it will start thinking in the background without you even realizing it. Now, that might sound funny, but actually, most of, the, most of your body works by itself, doesn't it? Your breathing, your heart rate, everything works by itself. So in the same way, your unconscious mind, your brain, mostly is working by itself, okay? So if you just do these questions in this order, when you're doing these earlier questions, your mind will be thinking about the creative or the viewpoint writing. However, if you are good at creative writing, viewpoint writing, if you get your ideas very quickly, then by all means you, you can do this, okay? But the main thing is, you should be experimenting with this before the exam, okay? Do not go into the exam and then think about which order you're going to do the questions in, okay? That would be really, really foolish thing to do. Now, another way of doing it is in this order. Do one, two, four, three, and five. Why? Because for paper one, what that means is that you skip the structure question initially. All right. So look here. You've got four facts. You've got the language question, structure question, and then the mini essay. But remember I said, for this, you can focus mainly on the language. So this is easy. And then you go from language to language. And then you can come back to structure and then do your creative writing. In other words, you see, if you switch from language to structure to language, you're asking your mind to switch from two different skills. And that's quite a hard thing to do. Okay, whereas if you do it in this order, you're only switching once. Also, because the structure question is only worth eight marks, if you run out of time, it's okay. You've only lost eight marks, although you shouldn't skip it completely. So for the structure question, if you just write down three quick sentences with the beginning, middle and end, believe it or not, you would probably get some marks with that. Okay. And then similarly, for paper two, You've got your statements, so that's fairly straightforward. And then notice here, look, short compare and long compare. If you go from here to there, you're doing the same skill, using the same skill, instead of, and then come back to language, you're only switching your mind once. Whereas if you go from here to there to there, you're having to switch your mind twice. So remember, in the language exam, timing is critical. 
very little time, you don't have time for your mind to be switching skill sets. Okay? So, in summary, so here in paper two, you skip the language question initially in paper two. Okay? In summary, I personally recommend this order. But it's entirely up to you. Experiment with it, talk to your friends, talk to your teacher, and then work out well before the exam which order you're going to do the questions in and then stick to that order when you get into the exam. Okay, now notice here I'm doing something I don't do very often in my videos. I've got this one slide with just one line on it in red. For your language exam, timing is everything. It's really heartbreaking for teachers when students come to them and they say, or oh, sometimes we see it in mock papers, so there, fortunately, there's time to change it, where people have spent half an hour on the eight mark question, they've just wasted time on small mark questions, and when they get to the 20 mark or the 40 mark, they have to quickly rush through it. It's so heartbreaking. So please, please, whatever you do, whatever order you do the questions in, you must get to those questions four and five, the, the 20 mark questions, the six, 16, 20 and 40 mark questions, okay? And that's it. I hope you found that video useful. If so, please do subscribe and tell all your friends about it. And I will see you in the next video where I'll be looking at some actual exam papers and going through them and showing you exactly how to answer each question or each type of question, I should say.